This is UPSC Polity Conceptual Series. Basically, I am trying to focus on the mains part of the polity, uh, especially for the upcoming mains examination. The idea is to exhaustively cover various topics. Of course, nobody can predict what UPSC will ask, what it may not ask. But no harm in having a better understanding of various issues which otherwise also are relevant for us as citizens of this country. Now, in this lecture, I'll briefly cover the aspects related to the constitutional provisions or the statutory changes which have been made or which have been incorporated to address the aspirations of the Gandhian concept of Gram Swaraj or the Gandhian concept of village republic. When the constitution was being framed, there were two schools of thought and I hope it is visible, uh, lighting is not so good and camera is also not very good but when I, the idea is I am writing for myself so that my thought process is directed but you can simply hear it if you are not able to clearly see it. So two schools of thoughts were there and in fact the Gandhian part was not a very large uh, means uh, not very largely vocal but still um, there were minority of groups or people who were vocal as far as Gandhian principles are concerned but by and large Gandhian principles were not having predominance in the assembly debates when the constitution was being framed but some of the issues which were raised during the assembly debates I'll just briefly cover and they are very general in nature so one is Gandhian and another is the uh, Western school of thought where the, the, way, the way we have designed our constitution, keeping the whole centralized arrangement. So we can say the Western constitutional thought, constitutional thought. So these were the two schools of thoughts besides some other thinkers who were there basically predominantly thinking about socialism and all. But now let us focus on these two schools of thought. The Gandhian school of thought wanted that our design, the democratic and constitutional design, the democratic and constitutional design should be such that village should be the unit and you should it should be bottom up approach basically the focus the the devolution of powers the functioning has to start from the village so you have according to that school of thought you have village republics and this village republic will be democratic and will also provide access, equitable access, equitable access to resources for common good. The idea is really, the idea is really very positive and it certainly theoretically is also very impressive. But whether having the governance based on village republic was really suitable for the uh, whether the village based governance was suitable when India gained independence the kind of conditions we had first of all the kind of uh, the governance uh, conditions or the requirement when we gained independence say 1947 and the constitution framing had started much before that because the constituent assembly was in place so we can say till 1950 when the constitution came into force we had seen a lot of turmoil we had experience of partition there were there were a lot of fissi paris tendencies centrifugal tendencies divisive tendencies so there was a need to have a strong uh, administrative arrangement so this was need for for strong, strong enough 
administrative arrangement and in fact this was one of the reason why we had predominantly unitary features. In fact this aspect I'll cover when I do the federal part but this is relevant here also. So we wanted a system of government, we wanted an establishment which could deal with that situation. We had poverty, we had poverty, we had hunger, malnutrition, deprivation and there were issues of law and order and number of others, other developmental issues which could be best addressed by having an arrangement which was based on the western constitutional principles where you have liberty, equality and all other freedoms are there, fraternity along with institutions created by the constitution which are more towards centralization at the top. So instead of having a bottom-up approach which was the Gandhian school of thought or the Gandhian idea, we preferred uh, an approach where you had center and you had satellite states. So you have center and states and entire governance authority and power was either given, was divided, not either given, was divided between the two units, two polities, that is the union and the states by the seventh schedule. So states and center became the center of administration. But the Gandhian concept was concept of Gram Swaraj, an ideal village. And that ideal village, as I said, has to be self-dependent, self-dependent in terms of its needs and this village will be governing itself, it will be a village republic, self-dependent and having its own institutions for say resolution of disputes, resolution of disputes, for that the idea was of panchayat and panchayat can be in an institution for, for various activities. It's a form of government at the local level. So this government can also have judicial functions. So this ideal village also was supposed to have, let me create some space so that I can just briefly describe what is that ideal village and what were the basic Gandhian uh, concept and philosophy or the requirements. So ideal village, village as per Gandhian school of thought which is Gram Swaraj or the village republic is self-sufficient. So self-sufficient has educational institutions both primary and secondary has learning and education also for industrial requirement at the village level. It will also have its own grain producing system. So food requirement or the uh, nutrition requirement has to be met by the village itself. It will have its own animal husbandry. It will have dairy cooperatives. It will have its own road network. It will have its own street lighting and other facilities, say example sanitation, drinking water. So there is nothing which is not to be done as far as village is concerned. It was not necessary to devolve all the powers to the villages to have these facilities available to the village. In fact, these facilities have been developed over the years. So these facilities can be created, 
can be generated by various institutional arrangement and the gandhian preference was village republic means it was village then becomes some kind of an autonomous unit independent of its neighbors and dependent on certain things it cannot be completely independent of its neighbors but self self sufficiency was the idea so when the debate was happening on the design of the constitution and the governance arrangement the gandhian school of thought felt that the gandhian uh, concept has not been sufficiently addressed or full justice has not been given to the gandhian thoughts but there was an counter argument from the other side one that the basic philosophy of having centralized arrangement as i mentioned that was anyway there they also said that still even if we are not having village republic there is a provision in the constitution for panchayats so that provision was kept in article 40 in the directive principles and it was there mentioned that the the panchayats will be devolved with such powers and authority to enable them to function as unit of self governance i think this brightness just one minute brightness has gone down units of self governance so but that was only up to the state to create like state means the government it can be central government it can be state government so when constitution uses state you have to be very careful whether it is using state for state government but largely state word in constitution other than the chapter which deals with the other than the part which deals with the state government everywhere wherever state is mentioned state there in the constitution it means government so it was up to the government to create such kind of arrangement then we also had certain other provisions in the constitution which would be enough to suggest that the gandhian thoughts were not completely diluted now what are the other provisions in the constitution by which we can forcefully say that the gandhian thoughts were not completely diluted so some of the conspicuous articles which clearly reflect the gandhian principles are we can say untouchability article 17 it is basically supportive of supportive of though it is not that only gandhi ji said that everybody wanted that so one is untouchability then if we look at article 25 26 27 28 which is for minorities and 30 is for the educational institutions for minorities this is for your freedom to practice and profess any religion so these are the articles related to your religious freedom and so secularism means communal harmony so communal harmony again is reflected in the constitution which is very much part of the of the principles and the ideas and the spirit which was very dear to gandhi ji now what are the other provisions now if we look at article 39 e is it, it talks about workers that health and strength of workers should not be abused and the tender age of children should also not be abused that is article 39 e in fact go through article 39 it's the most important article in the directive principle so 39 e talks about workers 42 article 42 article 40 i have already mentioned that talks about panchayats article 42 talks about workers again it also talks about maternity relief then article 43 talks about living wage to workers so living wage and adequate facilities for leisure and other community life for the workers 
43A which was added later on by 42nd amendment talks about participation of workers in management of industry. So workers and management. 43 also I think talks about, I will have to relook, uh, uh, I means you may read constitution 100, 100 times but still you may forget few things and get confused. I think 43 talks about cottage industry also. So this needs to be checked. 43 talks about that, 43A I have mentioned. And what are the other articles which are, which derive their spirit, source, strength, power, domain from Gandhian principles. The other one is Article 46, making special provisions for weaker sections, especially SC and ST, in terms of their economic upliftment and educational facilities and also preventing social injustice. So it clearly uses the word action against social injustice. Injustice word, I think this is the only place where constitution uses the word injustice, social injustice. It also talks about the, for the weaker section, especially for economic and educational. So this was also very much dear to the heart of the Gandhian school of thought. Then 47 talks about prohibition and prohibition which is in force say in Bihar and Gujarat in certain states. Then 48 talks about, it is basically about modernization of the uh, animal husbandry and that sector, but it also talks of preventing slaughter. So prevention of slaughter. So these are the some of the articles which very directly relate to the Gandhian concept. Though the powers are not devolved to the village and we don't have that ideal village, village Swaraj concept. But by making all these provisions and subsequently the foremost thing is the 73rd amendment which added panchayats and especially article 4, article 243G, economic and social planning and implementation of the social sector schemes are to be given, I mean state government can give that responsibility to panchayats. So that way panchayats have been given, have been devolved the powers, they now even have the constitutional status, even before they had the status under article 40 but now that 40 has been operationalized through, our, through 73rd amendment and all those ideas and areas which village Swaraj had envisaged are being done at the village level. And with Gram Nayale bill of 2000 act, sorry not bill, 2008 and I think Gram Nayale has been notified in 2009 which talks about setting off Gram a judicial system at the intermediate panchayat. It will not be at panchayat level, it will be at the intermediate panchayats. And I saw one, one parliament question answer where many states had initiated these steps for setting up Kram Nyayale. There it can be done only in consultation with the concerned high court. In fact, if you have to find very good and authentic source for anything, the best site is the parliament digital library and the parliament questions. From there, you get authentic information which will be very, very useful, not only for future examination, pre-examination, state examinations, and of course for the civil services mains examination.